morning. Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church on this, our first Sunday in the season of Lent. Glad to have you all worshiping with us today. Uh, for our friends who are viewing us online this morning, a few minutes prior to our video going live, this morning's worship bulletin was posted to our Facebook page. You can find the link for that, click on it, and follow along with the service uh, there with you wherever you are today. Uh, a few announcements I'll highlight for us today. Uh, probably one for this particular congregation is that next Sunday, there will be no 8 o'clock uh, church next Sunday. Uh, the bishop will be, be visiting with us, and so we'll have one combined service next Sunday at 10.30. So we invite you to join us at that service at 10.30, where we will confirm uh, Sam Watson and Elliot Potter. So it will be a, a wonderful occasion to be together as a church family. So please make a point uh, to join us next Sunday at 10.30. On Wednesday, starting this week, uh, Wednesdays in Lent, we'll do uh, a Lenten series. We're going to call it Saints and Soup. We'll do a little soup potluck, so bring the crock pot with you if you'd like to, to put a soup on for the day. Um, and we'll have some soup, and then we'll discuss the lives of the saints, uh, particularly as it relates to the Lent Madness program. Uh, if you'd like to follow that program, we've got some extra booklets in the back of the church or in the parish hall. Uh, their suggested donation of five dollars, but that's just a suggestion. You're welcome to have one if you like, and, uh, and we will use this as part of our Lenten program on Wednesday nights uh, at five thirty. You can join us in person at the parish hall or online via Zoom for that program. All the information is in the bulletin announcements today. And uh, lastly, is that after uh, the morning service at 9.15, we'll have our lectionary Bible study. That would be at 9.15 on Zoom or in the parish hall. So, and then kind of uh, take your pick. If you'd like to join us in person, you can meet us in the parish hall or on Zoom. And the link is provided for you in your weekly email as well as on your bulletin today. Let us now take a moment of silence and prepare ourselves for worship. Begin the season of Lent, our liturgy today will start with the great litany found in your bulletin. O God and Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. O God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, O Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Amen. 
from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from every en from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. By the mystery of the holy incarnation, by the holy nativity and submission to the law, by, the, by baptism, fasting, and temptation, Good Lord, deliver us. By thy magnity and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church, universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth. And show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give all people increase of grace. Hear and receive thy word to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and reserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several problems, to do the work which thou hast given us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve 
and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widow and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy people. The presence, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. They may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan, make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations. As thou knowest their several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated to read your lessons. When you have come into the land that your Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all fruit of ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. And the priest takes the basket from your hands and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God. You shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor, who went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. He brought us into this place and gave us the land, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
So I now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow it down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reciting Psalm number 91. Today we'll do it all together. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to be in love, Therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The second lesson comes to us from the book of Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your hearts, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Lord, to you, Lord. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this, and all this authority, for it has been given over to me. And I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil had finished every test he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to be O Christ. Speak to you in the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In today's gospel text, we hear the story of Jesus' 40-day journey into the wilderness following his baptism. And during these 40 days, he is tempted by the devil. At the conclusion of his temptations, we hear the final three attempts from the devil. The first temptation is directed at Jesus' body. Knowing Jesus to be hungry, the temptation was to entice his stomach. The second temptation is directed at Jesus' heart. The devil says to worship him. He will give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. And the third temptation is directed at Jesus' soul and his will. The devil tries to convince Jesus to tempt God into saving his life if he would have broke himself to certain death. In each of these final temptations, the devil is trying to promise to Jesus a short term or a narrow vision of satisfaction. Jesus responds to these temptations with a bigger perspective, with God's perspective. Why would Jesus need to settle for mere bread? The God avails all the feast that is creation. Why would Jesus settle for earthly kingdoms? The God has endowed him with the eternal landscape of the cosmos. Why would Jesus settle for a needless ride along with an angel? You will know the resurrection power of this morning. On Ash Wednesday, we spoke about the gift of the Lenten season, the gift of the 40-day wilderness journey. In today's Gospel text, Jesus returns from his 40-day excursion and reveals to us a glimpse of what these gifts might look like. The first gift reminds us that our Lenten discipline will lead us into something greater than the one thing that we gave up. Jesus says that humanity does not live on bread alone. A friend of mine is refraining from alcohol for his Lenten discipline this year. When Easter morning arrives, the gift waiting for him will not be a champagne toast, but rather a greater appreciation for life apart from the influence of alcohol. Another friend is giving up chocolate for Lent. Her gift on Easter morning will not be that big chocolate bunny, but rather it will be the ability to taste the complexity of the ways that God has endowed us to cultivate joy out of creation. The cocoa beans, the milk, the sugar cane, all come together with the voice of creation to provide a foretaste of life sweeter than we might imagine. My friends, Jesus reminds us that there is something more than mere bread waiting for us in our journey closer to the heart of God. The second gift reminds us that our heart belongs to God and that God is more than we, we can imagine. A friend of mine is taking on jogging for his Lenten discipline. When Easter morning arrives, his gift will not be the ability to run a six-minute mile, but it will be a fuller appreciation of how God enabled his will to commit to such a discipline. Another friend of mine is taking on reading scripture for his Lenten discipline. When Easter morning arrives, his gift will not be being able to say that he read the entire New Testament. But his gift will be that he will have a fuller picture of the story of God's love for him in the person of Jesus. My friends, Jesus reminds us that there are greater possessions in this world than the things that are here today and gone tomorrow. The third gift reminds us 
that our soul and our will belong to God and God alone. A friend of mine is committing to 20 minutes of prayer every day for her Lenten discipline. When Easter morning arrives, her gift will not be that she is going to be a happier person, but that she has learned to avail herself more fully and vulnerably to the heart of God. Another friend is refraining from gossiping for his Lenten discipline. Come Easter morning, his gift will not be that he has more friends, but that he has learned how to give and to receive grace, just as God does for him in his life. My friends, Jesus reminds us that we do not need to coerce God into loving us, but instead we need to believe that God's will for us is to draw closer to his heart. The gift of our Lenten journey offers us is to open up our lives to the fullness of God's love for us. This time is not intended to be narrow and restricting, but the opposite open, vulnerable, fully receiving of God's grace. My friends, whatever your Lenten discipline is this year, may you follow Jesus in his way. May you find yourself at the foot of the cross, bringing the offering of your body, your heart, your soul, and your will, so that on Easter morning, you will be ready to receive the gift God offers, the gift of God's very self. Amen. Standing as you're able, let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, who through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, for the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of this great mercy I promise forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon me, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let's walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Congregation, please rise as you are able. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy power have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very neat to write to our boundary. It is very neat to write to our boundary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, Laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth. 
and it's made to us thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ. Take our nature upon him, who suffered death upon the cross for our redemption. Perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. In the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make the deeds thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, Bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant we beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion. They worthily receive the most precious body and blood, thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as we shake your Christ our comforts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, that in thy manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table. But thou art the same Lord. Whose property is always his mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost lead us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May God assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members of the corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through her of thy everlasting kingdom. And we come to beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Depart in peace. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick. And love one another. May God, through his Holy Spirit, be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God.